The founder and pioneer national chairman of the defunct uh, Congress for Progressive Change, CPC Senator Rafai Hanga, has said there was an implied agreement that President Muhammad Buhari would hand over power to the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu, in 2023. Hanga, who cha chaired one of the parties which collapsed to form the APC in 2014, said the agreement was the reason why Tinubu remained in the APC after Buhari's first term. He, however, expressed doubt that the APC will give its ticket to Tinubu, predicting a fight ahead with power blocks among governors and some other forces in the presidency. Joining us to discuss this is Oponabo Inko Tare. He's a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Tare. Thank you. And good evening, Miriam. Yes, so there are lots of... Um, they said we, we would do this and we would do that. But let's start with the fact that this man... Um, let's look at the messenger and then we look at the message. A former chairman of the defunct CPC, of course, that used to be uh, former um, it used to be the party where um, President Muhammad Buhari um, was, and then of course all of these parties merged together to ha to become APC. And and before measures take place, I'm sure that there are certain agreements that are taken. But then when you hear the term "a gentleman's agreement," it looks like a handshake in the dark, isn't it? Well, a gentleman's agreement does not necessarily mean a handshake in the dark. I mean, it's just about understanding. In most cases, it could be implied. In most cases, it could be expressly stated. Um, it depends on your understanding of the signal from the other party. If it's implied, but if it's expressly stated, then it's obvious. It's lucid to everybody. I will give this to you if you do this for me. That is what you call the consensus added. If you do this, I'll do this. If you give me this, I'll give you. But if I do not so expressly state it, and you infer, that's the meaning of implied, you infer that this is going to be your reward for doing this, well, so to speak, fine. But one point has to be noted. Uh, it is not where it's patrimony. This is a democracy. We are not talking of a military regime. It's not a junta where A will say, I'll hand over to B for the role you play in my but it isn't, assumption it, of office. But isn't this what is I mean, obtainable in Nigerian politics? I mean, we have heard many governors who have handpicked people and said, oh, when I step down, it's going to be this person. And then when I go down, it's going to be that person. We've seen it happen in many states. I it mean, why, why all of a is sudden easier. is this a crime? Is it because of the president? Is it because it's the APC? It is, it is first and foremost, it, it is not, it is antithetical to democratic practice. But does it happen? No doubt about that. But doesn't it that, happen? That, that's, why it is, that's why you don't express this so state. Hmm. Because you, what you're trying to say is you're going to, at, at any cost, subvert the will of the masses. Their votes will not count. Because the democracy, it, the votes and the debates decide who becomes their leader. So I, that's I, 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 I want to I wanna, oh, no, I wanna take you that's up on this. In most cases, they say it is implied. Let me, let, me take you up. let me take you up. Hold on. Yes. Let me take you up on this. Um, when you say that we are not allowing the average Nigerian person to determine who becomes their governor, uh, that's already determined at the party level. Why? Because the ordinary Nigerian, most of them are not necessarily members of the party caucuses. They do not decide who wins the party congress or primaries. So really, does, does the average Nigerian really have a say in who the party uh, finally gives us as the governorship or the presidential candidate? I mean, literally, it looks like th these people are being foisted. Okay, whether that, you're, whether you're, democ I, I, I'm not speculating, I'm just saying. You're talking about intra-party. That's what That's I'm saying, but it's the party that produces intra, the intra candidates, party. isn't it? Uh, but, but, well, even if Buhari had made that promise, I agree if it's intra-party, then we will we'll not talk of Nigerians yet. But even if Buhari had made, expertly made that promise, there are dynamics. The situation has changed. And Buhari probably would have made that promise just for him to get the ticket. Because we know the role Tinubu played in Buhari's emergence. We know the role Tinubu played in Buhari's uh, victory. So he probably would have made that promise. And Tinubu would have played those roles role 
would have contributed so much, believing he was going to succeed Buhari, or he is going to succeed Buhari. But then, don't forget that there are, at that time, how many of them were there? How many were in the party? How many people have exited the party? These are the issues you are going to consider. And you now have power blocks, new power blocks. Look, there is this, there this rumor that people had fallen out. It got to a point where Mr. President himself had to come out to say he had no problem with Tinubu. So a lot of things would have passed, would have happened. A lot of water would have gone under the bridge. So as we speak right now, you have new power blocks. No power blocks that can comfortably checkmate Tinubu. Before now, it was Tinubu, Tinubu, and Tinubu. But I can tell you today that you don't just have the Tinubu faction. You have at least three to four major factions within the APC. And all of them have the ears of Mr. President. So it's going to be a little bit difficult for Mr. President. We are going, I'm going to hand this power over to Tinubu. It's going to be a very tall order. Because a lot of people, they, they must have agreements, reconciliation, and what, even as I understand, even the present caretaker chairman, who is the governor, is also interested. Hmm. Interesting. It's also interested. Hmm. Yes. So you have a lot of issues. So it's not going to be as easy as a lot of people think that this Buaru will just get up one mind to say it must be Tinibu. Even if, and Buaru is not coming back for a second, for a top ten. So even though he has that influence right now, the influence is not as strong. It has appreciated that it's not as strong as it was in his first time. Because they now know that we can talk to hell with this man after all he's meeting. That's why he found out that even when governors voice people on the people after one or two years, or the second time he found out that even their so-called uh, beneficiaries who are who took over from them have issues with them. Because they already not to hell with you. Mm. What, what else can you do? You're already out of power. Or you're going out. You're on your way out. So that's exactly what the situation will be. It's not going to be easy for the Mr. President to say it's going to hand over to Tinibu. It's not going to be that easy. Tinibu will really have to lobby for it. I'm curious about the sensitivity of this issue. As much as many people would say, oh, pay no ear. Um, I mean, Hanga is calling it an open secret. He's, he's said that, he's implied that it's an open secret, that every <coughs> serious member of the APC knows about this implied agreement. But then we reached out to several APC um, stalwarts and leaders, you know, uh, but they, they all, you know, passed on this particular issue. They refused to speak, including, uh, you know, um, um, Senator James Akwanodoidege. He also said he, he didn't, you know, respond to this. So does this signal that there, there might be some trouble brewing in the APC, being that Hanga also said that it's going to be pretty tough for whoever would emerge to be president on the platform of the APC, being that it's, he seemingly implied that it was a house that was on shaky footing. Well, um, first, a lot of people will probably fail to respond because um, I, I think that they were probably aware of this implied agreement and are now cognizant of the prevailing circumstances. And so we now want to be caught in the crossfire. Maybe they are aware, but they have realized that it's going to be difficult. And they don't want to be quoted. Now you're quoting uh, the former CPC chairman. They don't want that for themselves. So because in politics, you have to be extremely careful so that you don't fall on the wrong side. And I think that's what they are. They are just being cautious. On the issue of um, APC winning in 2023, uh, it's a tall order because of its abysmal performance. There is so much hunger in the land. The insecurity has assumed uh, ap apocalyptic dimension. You find out that uh, everybody, there is so much uncertainty. In fact, there is confusion, hunger, threats to life in this country. So it will be very, very difficult for anybody who imagines an APC chairman, APC uh, candidate in 2023 to win the election. It will take the intervention, special intervention of God for that to happen. So really, right, really I, I, I'm curious, and I'm not in any way saying that the APC will or will not win. I mean, that's subject to the elections in 2023. But we seem to see a lot of movement in the APC's direction. We're seeing governors who are you know, defecting every other day. Now, uh, and that's me using every other day loosely. Um, again, we have seen the PDP governors, 
the PDP governor saying uh, that they're being threatened by the APC and they've been threatened to defect. I remember uh, the spokesperson for the PDP governors after that meeting implying that uh, there seems to be a push and a hammer, you know, trying to knock them to move to the opposition. Um, so if you, if you sound like, oh, it's a tall order for the APC, they seem to be building their strength in lips and bounds because they're, they're stealing from the opposition and they're growing their numbers. Isn't that even a plus in that direction? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, I can, I can tell you. But I, I, you see, most of these governors that defected from PDP to APC did not defect because they believed in the ideology of the party, did not defect because the party is doing well. In fact, that would be an indictment on themselves because as governors of the state, uh, if the state is not doing well, your own state is not doing well, then you are afraid they've got a box us at your table. So they are defecting, not for auto-centric reasons, not for any acoustic reasons. It is not in the interest of their members. It is just because most of them are in their second term and they want higher office. Not even for fear of persecution, no. But because the man who ordinarily would have persecuted them is, the, is also living with them. That's Mr. Persinger. Hmm. So it is for higher office. They are defective because they believe that in the PDP, there, is, there are chances of getting to where they want to get is quite slim. You know, there is this belief that in the PDP, you have somebody that is using his pizza, bringing his pizza to beer, and is dictating to the party. A lot of people would have accused, have, have said that. Many top PDP Star Wars have said that, and have alluded to that. So they knew, and I, most of them will come back to the same PDP when they realize that <coughs> realizing their ambition might be a little bit obvious. They will come back to the same PDP. It is all about interest. Politics is all about interest. It has nothing to do with how well the party has fared or how well the present government has said. It has nothing to do with that. No nexus with that. It has to do with personal ambition. And that's why they're defending. So, so, so if it's all about ambition... Come back to the PDP. So if it's all about ambition, then it means that, I mean, if, if, if the APC is growing in their numbers every day because everybody there seems to be that, ambitious, no, no, yes, no, no, does that, it that, not maybe, translate... Maybe, Go ahead. No, maybe I should... I remember what I said. If we listen to what I said, most of them will come back to the PDP or will go back to the PDP. Before 2023? Even just in that 2023. Politics have, have just started. The political houses have just started. By next year, early next year, a lot will play out. Okay. It's too early right now to come up with problems. A lot will play out by next early next year. I can tell you that. A lot of people that defend that. It happened even in 2019. It happened in 2015. A lot of people that have defected to the APC will come back to the PDP and will apologize to the PDP and tell them it was a big mistake. We were in the dark, now we've seen the light. You know, all those kind of political statements. Let's, that is what is going to happen in 20, let's 20 examine, years at the end of next year. Let's examine the PDP for a minute. Um, the PDP seems to be fading in its voice, unfortunately. And I remember talking to Kola Logbodino, uh, the public, National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, uh, I think two weeks ago, and I asked him, why they have not played their opposition role as powerfully as the APC did them in 2015 and, and before it became the APC. And why it seems like the PDP just recently found its voice again in the midst of all the insecurity that we've been facing in the country. Uh, so it, it begs a question. I remember someone who was on the show asked me, what exactly is in the PDP and why would people not leave the PDP? So really, let's take a look at the PDP. Have they really, you know, played their role well as the opposition? And, and what, what do they really have that would make their, their members want to stay put? Knowing that we're a country where, you know, we crisscross, uh, you know, uh, on uh, along party lines every other day. Well, like I just said, um, you, you, you probably both have my, my, my assertion. Like I said, it, it has nothing to do with ideology. It has to do with... Um, the fusion of ambition. Where which party will be a better chance platform for me to realize my ambition? It's as simple as that. Now, talking of PDP being a viral opposition, PDP has failed that business completely uh, compared to the role APC played in 2013, 2014, or 2014, 2015. 
PDP, there is no position in this country. The opposition you have are the civil society groups and individuals, not PDP as a party. PDP is on a long journey of <coughs> lethargic sleep, in a land of lethargic sleep, and the next. And you said they are just waking up. They are not, PDP has not woken up. It's still on that long journey, sudden, in the land of lethargic sleep. It has not woken up at all. Because uh, it, 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 we are all aware of what the APC did in 2013, 2014, and 2015. We are all aware. And we are talking about this is 2021, and you cannot even feel the impact of a party, the major opposition party in the country. You can't even feel the impact. The PDP talks like any other normal human being. Once in a while, you are not even proactive. APC was quite proactive. PDP is only reacting. So that's the only opposition that we have are the civil society groups and individuals, not PDP. I can say that. Having said this, if you talk about what the PDP has done, you see, the two parties failed Nigeria. Woefully, the two parties, no doubt about that, they have failed Nigeria. But then, when you just oppose, you choose between the PDP and the APC. I can tell you that the PDP fared better. But again, it is a it is a paradox. Why did I say it's a paradox? Because most of the APC members were PDP members. Hmm. And if we say the APC, the PDP members performed well, then we are also saying by extension. There are some of the members who are in APC who also perform well as governors or as ministers or as senators, but most of them today, we are PDP members. Okay. Well, so it, 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 looks, <laughs> it looks bleak. <laughs> you, look, you, you look flustered. You look confused. <laughs> I'm a little confused because it's, 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 it's difficult for us to actually tell who's who now. But uh, uh, on that note, we have, to wrap, exactly. we have to wrap things up because exactly. I'm sure the average Nigerian who's watching now is also as confused as us as to where is this ship headed? Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you very much. Because, 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 well, let's, okay. Well, let's say, for example, now, uh, the Minister for Transportation uh, did extremely well when he was the government the first time. I've given an example, university. Now he's an APC member. So how, <laughs> how are you going to accept him? Well, we, well, we have to go. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> we have to go. Upunabo Inko Tyra is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, on thank that note, I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. We are out of time. I am Mariana Kona. I'll see you tomorrow when we're analyzing other political issues. Have a good evening.